Hello students. In unit 2, differential calculus, we are going to start with the introduction. Let's get on to the presentation. So before starting, let's have the overview. So first we will be starting about introduction and then we move on to some applications. And then we have the basic concepts of domain and range. So first let's start with the introduction of differential calculus. So calculus is a branch of mathematics focused on limits, functions, derivatives, integrals and infinite series. So we also have integral calculus. That's why integrals come here. So who had invented the integral calculus or differential calculus or how calculus had come into existence? The discovery of calculus is attributed to two men from the 17th century. They are none other than Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz. So you previously had studied about these two personalities. So Isaac Newton due to the gravity, an apple falling on him. So he had invented the gravity etc. From there he had started. So how Newton got the idea to introduce calculus. Newton focused on gravity and laws of motion are linked to this breakthrough in calculus. He started by trying to describe the speed of a falling object. Also found that the speed of a falling object increases every second. This is a great breakthrough in the field of mathematics and differential calculus or calculus is extensively applied in all major fields of engineering and sciences. So what is differential calculus? Differential calculus deals with the study of the rates at which quantities change. So wherever you see quantities changing, there differential calculus is applied. So the student's major point is why should I study differential calculus? Another point is it's the most hardest thing in mathematics and uh, to my knowledge many students had uh, openly uh, confessed that they had ignored the topic differential calculus and integral calculus in their 11th and 12th standard. So but that is not the actual case. So when you know about the application and the beauty of differential calculus automatically your interest will grow. So wherever you see changes happening, wherever you see quantities of changes happening, their differential calculus is applied. So what are the changes you see across? Even a plant from a seedling, it starts growing on its own. It does not change its place or whatever it is. It just keeps growing from a small seedling, from a plant, and from a small uh, etc etc and goes to a tree. So there it is a rate of change. At what rate it changes, their differential calculus is applied. So in so many fields it is applied. It is one of the two principal areas of calculus. So for example, so the well known example where we see velocity, the rate of change of distance. So in the morning 8 o'clock, college uh, opens at 8 o'clock so by 6 o'clock or by 7 o'clock you board inside the college bus so as the college bus proceeds your rate of change of distance varies with respect to time and you finally reach college so there are several ex uh, examples which we can relate to differential calculus next to jog down let's have you discuss few exam applications of differential calculus so calculus has been crucial to the development of many scientific advancements, especially in the fields of physics and engineering. It tells about the motion of astronomical bodies, weather patterns, electric and electronic circuits and systems and the movement of sound and light. Calculus is required by architects and engineers to determine the size and shape of the curves. They apply in building bridges, tunnels and roads. 
here I want to insist. If you would have seen the building of Savita Engineering College, it's such a huge and manifested building. And everyone's eye, those who enter the campus, just goes towards that building and the structure of the building. It just looks like a beehive when you see it from very far. And it nearly attracts everyone, whoever sees it. So what a beautiful structure built by the engineers. So these were, where is the basic coming from? All comes from differential calculus. All comes from calculus, where engineers and architects use it to create beauty in the buildings and in structures. It is used to create mathematical models in order to arrive into an optimal solution. It uses the concept of motion, electricity, heat, light, harmonics, acquisitions, astronomy and dynamics. You can create many mathematical models like you can create how you can create bridges, a sample copy of that you can create it mathematically as a model. Biologists use differential calculus to determine the exact rate of growth. You know what you study in biomedical, medical electronics. You see how the organism grow. So every minute it grows or every day you just keep observing how the microorganisms grow. So the exact rate of growth in a bacterial culture when differential variables such as temperature and food source are changed. So not only here in this slide, we have many more applications of differential calculus. Try to explore it by yourself. So now let's get on to the concepts of our particular topic. So first we'll start with what is a function? So function is a set of ordered pairs of numbers x and y such that no x values are repeated. Okay. So we take an ordered pair. For every x, what is the value of y? Like that. Okay. So we just go ahead with a function x and y. We take an ordered pair of numbers and very strictly x values are not repeated. And let's have the idea of domain and range. The domain is a set of all values of the independent variable, the x coordinate. Okay, so as we I have already mentioned now, x value should not be repeated. So the domain value is totally as an x coordinate, it should not be repeated. So it is called as independent variable. What is range then? The range is a set of all values of the dependent variable, the y coordinate. So y is always a dependent variable and x is the independent variable. So this is the basic concepts of a function domain and range. Now let's discuss a few problems based on domain and range. So there are several categories of how you find domain and range. So first the question says example number one identify the domain and range of the function below. So you have set of paired elements right. So 2 comma 7, 4 comma 11, 6 comma 15, 8 comma 19. So what is the domain? So you know what is the value of the domain? X coordinates. So the domain is, where are the X coordinates here? 2, 4, 6 and 8. What are the Y coordinates which are dependent on X? 7, 11, 15 and 19. This is a very simple problem to start with. Now let's move on to example number 2. Given F of X, here we don't have a ordered pair. We have a function defined f of x is equal to 4x plus 8. Determine the range given the domain of 0 to 4. So what does domain means x coordinate. So what do you try to do? You start substituting the value of x over here. Now what is f of x? Now you may, uh, you may think where is y here? y is always f of x. Okay, it's a function of x. It's dependent on x. So y is always treated as f of x. So given the values of x, you start substituting the values of x in this f of x. So what will I do? If I substitute 0, I will be getting only 8. So 8 is my answer. So next you substitute 2. 2 if I substitute, 2 into 4 will give you 8. 8 plus 8 will give you 16. And next take the third value. Substitute 4 in place, sorry, substitute 4 in place of x. 
So 4 into 4 will give you 16. 16 plus 8 will give you 24. Therefore, the range is 8, 16 and 24. Let's move on to example number 3. Now here, there is no ordered pair, there is no function. They have just given a graph representation. So you know what is the x value starting from? Starting from 0 and just keeps varying horizontally. And y values vary vertically. What is the domain and range of this particular function? So what is the value? Just you can observe the curve here. right? So where is the curve starting and where is the curve ending on x values? So you could clearly say that. The curve starts here exactly. So what is the value of x at that particular point? 0. And where is the curve ending? Here. Come down. Right. And what is the value of x at that particular point? 4. So my domain is 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 4. So it is a closed interval. So range is from where is the y value is varying? You have to see this way vertically. So what, where is the curve starting actually? It is starting here. This is where the curve is placed. So y value is 1. And where is the curve upper point or where it is ending on the top? So it is going to be at 5. Sometimes if the curve goes increasing here or at 7, you can include 7. right? So domain is 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 4. And range is 1 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 5. And example number 4. Find the domain of the function f of x is equal to 1 upon x. So how do I find the solution here without any given points for me? Right. So what should I do? I try to equate the value of x is equal to 0. So why should I do that? So let me find out where the function is not uh, existing or where or what value of x the function is into a big trouble. So can you tell me? You can just look at the function and easily say, if x is 0, if x is 0, what will happen to this function? Anything divided by 0 will lead to infinity or undefined. So what happens to this function? x is equal to 0, so which means it is undefined at x is equal to 0. Therefore, the domain of x is such that a set of all x such that x is not equal to 0. So you should not consider the value of x at 0 whereas you can consider any other points apart from that. So therefore the domain will be defined as a interval minus infinity to 0 union 0 comma infinity. So union in the sense both can be considered. So since it is open interval you can exclude 0. So the end points are excluded. Are you able to understand? So here I am not including closed interval. I am including the concept of open interval. So, therefore, the endpoints are not included. Hence, the domain of this particular function is defined like this. And this will be the last example for discussion. Find the domain of the function f of x is equal to x plus 4 upon x square minus 9. So, how do I find the solution for this? So, from the given function f of x is equal to x plus 4 upon x square minus 9, it can be noticed that the function f is undefined at x square is equal to 9, correct? So whatever values I may substitute here, it may exist. But if I substitute uh, minus 3, what will happen? I will be lining up with 9. I will be, my answer will be 0 in the denominator. If I substitute plus 3, again it will be leading to 0. So in both categories, x is equal to plus or minus 3, we see that the denominator vanishes and we are into a very big problem that is a function becomes undefined. So we need to put a stop over there. So how do I put a stop over there? I have to use open intervals. So how will I define the domain? Minus infinity to minus 3 union minus 3 to 3 union 3 to infinity. So this is how I break the interval. Therefore, the domain of f is defined as set of all x such that x is not equal to minus 3 and x is not equal to 3. Clear? So, this come, uh, from after this, we just come to the end of the first lecture. Thanks for watching. Um, let's continue in the next lecture.